Morning, Arsene. Uh, firstly, what's your team use for tomorrow's game? Team use is that, uh, of course, uh, from last week, maybe Bellerin will have a test uh, today. Nobody else is back. Jack Richard could be back in the squad. Uh, because he's available again, and uh, I uh, don't believe that uh, anybody else should be out. How pleased are you to have Jack Wilshere at your disposal again after three months injured? He's uh, <coughs> he's a bit ahead of schedule, you know, and uh, he's worked hard and had no big problems, so it's good to have him back. Any other injuries? Aaron Ramsey, Alex Oxlade, Chamberlain, how are they progressing? Chamberlain is back in full training, he's a bit short uh, to be considered and uh, Ramsey I think is 10 days away. And just finally, it's Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park tomorrow, what sort of test are you expecting? Uh, it's always very intense and uh, very dynamic ground, you know, it's a bit uh, hybrid ground. Uh, it's a, an old fashioned stadium uh, with a soul and uh, completely uh, the crowd that is always behind their team, so we expect always a passionate afternoon. Arsen, you've had a lot of players you've talked about in recent weeks coming back from injury ahead of schedule. Why are so many guys coming back ahead of schedule, or are you doing something different with the dates that you give us? No, uh, no. I, you, you mean do I give too long <laughs> before? <laughs> you used to get criticised for players taking too long to come back. Has anything changed? Well, I just try to uh, I give you the delays that I've been given by the medical people. Uh, so if it's shorter, may, uh, but most of the time, because uh, when it's straightforward surgery, you know, a broken bone, and the guy has no setback, is a bit, can be a bit ahead of schedule. Maybe they take a little security on the medical front and then uh, it looks good when it's shortened up but uh, uh, usually when you have no setbacks uh, uh, they can be a bit uh, quicker. You said Jack's close to, to coming back. You also were quoted recently saying that he needs to, to master his life. In this injury break period do you think he's thought about that stuff at all? Yes, I, do, I, don't, I don't know well how everybody <coughs> lives but I think every professional football player has to control his life and dedicate it to, to the game. How will your team selection be affected by the Champions League match? Not at all. No. Most important game is uh, Crystal Palace, because it's the next one and uh, uh, the Champions League has no influence on that at all. Fabrizio Colaccini was hit by a coin very close to his eye at Crystal Palace. There was also a similar incident in the Liverpool game. Do you have any concerns about your own players' safety in this game? No, not really, because it went always well when you played at, uh, at Palace, but uh, coins is something that is very dangerous, because it can, it can hurt uh, uh, badly, and I think that has to be controlled, of course. A youth team player said on, on Twitter this week that he was coached by Thierry Henry. Is that an addition to the... Who? the by Thierry Henry. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, he uh, makes his badges and uh, he makes his first steps as a coach and that's always a bit impressive when you start, you know, but uh, it's good for the young players, for our young players to be coached by him, by a legend of the club. Can you tell us a little bit about what he's doing, how often he's here? Honestly, uh, I think uh, he has been here once or twice, but... Uh, I don't know how often he has to, to do his sessions. I don't see him when he's here because uh, he's on a different ground and he's with the youth team. Racism's been on the agenda again this week. What mm -hmm. did you think when you saw the clip from that metro train in Paris? Uh, they look like pathetic, you know, and uh, dreadful. And unfortunately, uh, we have a recurrence of that always. And uh, But uh, you have to be extremely uh, severe with any, any incident of that calibre. Is it football's problem or society's problem? Society's problem. How can we tackle it? <sighs> Look, uh, more intelligent people than myself who think about that and uh, nobody has find, found a miraculous solution. But uh, it certainly uh, starts from childhood, from education and open-minded uh, attitude. Horrible as it might be to admit it, do you think that there's a, a, a group like that at every club all over the country? 
there is a danger of having uh, radical people in every uh, society. I think, uh, <coughs> look, uh, since uh, I observe views, movements of the news, you have always a certain pe number of people who are uh, ready for radical solutions. So, uh, most of the time you have to control them. Just a final subject, Louis Vigo announcing his FIFA presidential campaign this week. Would you support it and was there anything in his manifesto that caught your eye? Look, uh, there's, uh, you, you, uh, it's interesting to see that former players run for the campaign, uh, apart from the spectacular names. Uh, but it's always interesting to see that people want to dedicate uh, to improve the quality of our game. That's after you have a, the most spectacular announcement and then the, the deeper problems. I think uh, in football uh, now what is uh, very important is to uh, develop our game at the uh, grassroots level all over the world. That is the most important. And I would like to support people who have have solutions for that. Dedicate <coughs> more money to give good coaching because coaching is as well, we spoke about the youth just now, is about education and giving values to people. What is most needed uh, is that. For the rest, the job is done in football at the professional level. For 98% of the part is done. You know, you can m m always bring uh, some improvements, but they are minor now. What is the most important program for the FIFA and mm -hmm. candidates yeah. is to continue to develop worldwide uh, football at, at the youth level. Is that you endorsing Luis Figo's bid? <coughs> Look, uh, I endorse anybody. I don't, I'm not in a well good position to, to judge all the candidates because I haven't read the VAF programs, and, uh, but he's one of the credible candidates, of course. Arsene, uh, what do you make of Alan Pardew's comments uh, this week about uh, he believes that Santi Corzola is your player of the year this season? Everybody seemed to think it was going to be Sanchez. And, until now, he has been uh, maybe uh, the, uh, the most consistent. He has been voted twice uh, player of the month in the last two months. That means he's been uh, remarkably consistent. And since he has moved uh, centrally, uh, his influence was bigger in the team as well. You, you brought in a, a French actor this week to give your players a pep talk, Sebastian Foucault. What uh, was you thinking there? Uh, nothing special, you know. We have uh, sometimes uh, people who give us their experience of, uh, of, life. of life, of life and of uh, targets. And you realise that there are some people out there who are ready uh, to give a lot to be successful. That's what basically is behind it. Mm. What do you make of the Balotelli penalty incident yesterday? Um, what, what would you have done? Look, uh, uh, we have all experienced that as managers. The damage can be big if you miss the penalty. When you score, it's easy to always to repair. He scored and you have to say, well done. Would you say well done to Alan Pardew for what he's done in the last month? Of course. He's done extremely well. And how do you think he's changed the way Palace play? Look, uh, they have uh, found confidence again and uh, they made positive results. So that's what, you, what it is about when you're manager. Just one final question from me about the psychology of sport and sports management. England's cricketers uh, went down to a, a heavy thrashing this morning. I'm sure you'd have been watching it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, di it's uh, difficult to avoid when you open the television <laughs> anyway, cricket in England. Um, how, how, do you, how do you, in your experience, do you get over such a heavy thrashing as that? What sort of, um, how do you deal with that? Obviously you've had uh, Yes, you're right. It's, uh, to, heal, to heal the psychological, uh, uh, damage that means uh, the self esteem and the confidence drops, and uh, it's always difficult to make uh, a separation of the emotional aspect and uh, the objective uh, judgment of what happened. And uh, responsible people have, of course, to deal with both, but uh, at the end of the day, you have to, an to analyze why that happens. But what is interesting in sport is that it's practiced by human beings. And that uh, they are not robots, you know, they're good and bad days, and uh, uh, after a very bad day, you can only get better.
So do you have to sort of step back um, and just let them stew on it, if you like? No, you have to... Uh, a team with... You have to be severe when you win and uh, sometimes uh, be helpful when the team loses, you know, and, uh, and not to just step away and dismiss uh, the bad performances. You're part of it, you're part of the experience, and uh, you play a part in it as well. Also, is Paul Chappell should be ready to start, or do you think it's more likely to be on? I cannot tell you that now. I have before the last training session, uh, it's very difficult for me, I have not picked the team, definitely. I mean, do, you, do you have to manage him, presumably he's not going <coughs> to come back in, you have to just... Look, uh, it's difficult to come back uh, straight away, always, you know, but uh, uh, what is good is that already back. From the signs that you've seen, he's obviously had a few ankle problems in the past, do you have any, any long-term concerns about him now, or do you think he's over those problems? No, for, for that injury he had uh, was on the left ankle. Uh, that's not the way he had his, all his problems on the right ankle, you know, and that's a straightforward injury. Once it's healed, there's no problem. Um, just on Thierry being here, how did that come about? Did, did he ask you to come here and yeah. start his badges? And you obviously we are very happy to welcome everybody. Uh, all our former players come back here, you know, all, all of them. Um, inevitably, it's led some people to suggest that when you eventually step down could, could take over, do you well, see that? Well, it's not my problem, you know, that will, be, <laughs> that will be a problem of the board to make with that decision. Do you think that he's got that in him, though, one day that he could manage Arsenal? Yes, of course, uh, but I had, uh, of course, that, yeah, I said that many times, but uh, I had many, 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 many players who can do that, this job. Um, just on, well, just one on the, the Paris incident, is it important, do you think, that, that Jose Mourinho comes out and condemns it, that the whole club has that? It's uh, the whole club, I think, uh, I don't think that the managers uh, uh, agree with that kind of behaviour. It's important though that he... Everybody has to fight against that, uh, why, why uh, uh, should you not, you know, there's no, no reason at all you have uh, to be 100% against that, it's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, and just finally for me, you've scored, the team scored inside the first 30 minutes in the last eight matches. I, is that a consequence of a change of approach? Or yes, it's a consequence of a change of approach, but uh, is not a change of attitude, it's just, I think, a, a change of uh, confidence. When, when the confidence in the team is higher, we s you start a bit stronger. When the confidence is low, it's always the start is a bit more difficult. Um, if Jack comes back into your side. Does that have an issue with the, with the balance of the team that you've talked about in recent weeks? Does that give you a... Uh, you, you, no matter who plays, you always worry first about the balance of the team, yes. With um, Santi, there's been some suggestion that Atletico Madrid uh, are looking to, to, to take him back to, to Spain. Do you view his long-term future because his contract situation... He has extended his contract last year. Mm -hmm. And I think he has still two years to go. You see no, no reason for him not to be part of it. Uh, he just was 30 years old, just two years to go, you know, our policy at the club. So I don't think there's anything special to worry about that. Can, can you understand uh, this? And uh, the suggestion is uh, only a suggestion. We have never been approached by anybody about him. Any, any more progress on any, any of the other contracts with the, with the guys? Yes. Uh, if you speak about Coquelin and uh, Akpom that uh, is settled. Anything with, with, with Theo, any, any movement? No, no, the, Theo is uh, early doors. No, it's early. Um, Manchester United away Monday night. Mm -hmm. What do you make of the scheduling of, of, of that fixture? It's, it's hardly, uh, hardly ideal, is it? For Look, uh, we play when we are told to play. Is it Monday or Sunday or Friday? We just want to win. And uh, we adapt to the time, uh, and uh, I don't think that uh, will be a major problem for us. It's certainly not the most prestigious timing for people who want to watch on television. Uh, it's more suited maybe for a Sunday game, but television has made that choice. We adapt, we have no problem with it. Would you rather have had a tough test like that, or Bradford at home? I thought that might be more difficult. <laughs> yes, uh, but uh, what I want is to go to yeah. Wembley and 
no matter who we play. Arsène, vous avez enfin pu jouer avec toute votre attaque la semaine dernière. Giroud, Welbeck, Ozil, Sanchez, Cazorla. Quel est le rôle de chacun Qu'est-ce que vous leur demandez bah, De respecter le collectif d'abord. Notre jeu est basé avant tout sur le collectif. Donc euh, c'est une équipe assez euh, déséquilibrée là, vers l'avant. Donc il faut que euh, tout le monde fasse sa part de travail euh, pour euh, contribuer à la récupération du ballon. Et en même temps... Quand on a autant d'individualité, euh, il est très très important que chacun respecte euh, l'autre et qu'il qu fasse la passe quand euh, le jeu le demande. Combien de buts sur une saison doit peser une telle attaque et où est-ce qu'elle doit vous mener Écoutez ça, euh, j'ai pas mal d'expérience mais je ne suis pas assez bon à ce niveau-là pour vous prédire combien de buts ça doit peser. Et ce qu'on sait, c'est qu'une attaque prolifique en première ligue... Euh, ça vaut entre 70 et 100 buts dans la saison. Je pense que pour l'instant, on, on, on est loin de là. Est-ce que c'est votre meilleure attaque depuis Thierry Henry, Denis Bertrand et compagnie C'est une attaque qui a peut-être euh, le plus de potentiel. Mais bon, euh, on est devant trois mois très très importants pour nous. Et euh, comme vous le soulignez tout à l'heure, euh, c'est la première fois qu'on peut tous les aligner ensemble. Donc on verra si euh, on arrive à manier à la fois... Euh, la valeur et l'efficacité et euh, c'est pour ça que les trois mois devant nous sont très importants et Dernière question, euh, bientôt la Ligue des Champions qu'est-ce que vous pensez du nouveau projet sportif de l'AS Monaco bah, Je pense qu'il est plus adapté économiquement à, à leur potentiel et que euh, le, la, la première solution ne me paraissait pas viable sur le long terme et que la deuxième euh, me paraît nettement plus faisable sur le, sur le long terme euh, Olivier Giroud une relation un peu particulière à Arsenal avec les supporters. Euh, il a un bilan assez extraordinaire depuis des rencontres. Il a 7 buts et 3 passes décisives. Et pourtant, on sent toujours un peu des... des pas des petites critiques, mais on a l'impression qu'il est un petit peu sous-estimé. Euh. Oui, parce que c'est peut-être dû à son style qui est un peu moins euh, élégant ou moins racé que des attaquants comme Van Percy. Mais moi, ce qui est important pour un attaquant, c'est l'efficacité. Et je pense qu'Olivier Giroud est aussi en train de changer cela parce qu'il a beaucoup progressé sur un plan technique, il a beaucoup progressé sur, au niveau de sa mobilité. Et euh, aujourd'hui, il est devenu un attaquant complet. La meilleure preuve, c'est qu'il euh, commence à faire beaucoup de passes décisives. Et euh, en plus, il a une qualité qui est nettement sous-estimée. C'est un vrai équipier sur le terrain. Il travaille pour l'équipe est toujours prêt à donner un coup de main aux autres. Et en général, ce n'est pas le point fort des attaquants qui marquent beaucoup de buts. Il y a un joueur qui a un profil totalement différent, c'est Alexis Sanchez. Mmh. Euh, Olivier dit qu'il est surnommé le, la clé du racel. Oui. Est infatigable. Oui, c'est ça. Euh, tous les jours, il est, il est à 220 volts. Et puis, euh, euh, il a une énergie formidable. Il a une forme de récupération euh, que j'ai rarement vue dans ma carrière. Pourtant, j'ai vu beaucoup de grands attaquants. Tous les matins, il est prêt et euh, prêt et débordant d'énergie. C'est une chance d'un nature et euh, en plus il a un gros enthousiasme, donc euh, il, il aime ça, il aime le foot, il faut qu'il joue au foot, sinon il est malade. Yes, of course. Uh, Uh, I think Marwan Chamak uh, came here as a striker. The first six months he did very well. After Van Persie came back from injury and he was a bit uh, sub, lost confidence. And uh, I'm happy that he went to Crystal Palace and uh, it makes a good career now. He dropped off as well. He's not the target man anymore. He's more midfielder or, or uh, second striker. And uh, because he's a real team player, Marwan, Uh, that position suits him very well. And you, obviously, you obviously saw something in him to bring him to Arsenal in the first place. And he, he Look, I, I loved him always because of his team attitude and because he was a hard working type. But uh, in the end, he didn't play, and uh, you have to give the players a chance to go somewhere and play. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.